Hello friends and welcome back to Naturally Catholic. My name is Heather and in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you guys all about the loop schedule. Okay, so there are a few ways you can do a loop schedule and I'm gonna share with you guys what works best for me, but I'm also going to explain the other ways that you can do a loop schedule as well. So we're gonna be answering three questions. What is a loop schedule? Why do you need to use a loop schedule? And how to use the loop schedule? So loop scheduling is basically a pile of work or curriculum or activities that you have on maybe a list or um, in a book and basically you just choose different sections of that curriculum subject and then you just stretch it out over a period of time so this can be done in a week this can be done bi-weekly this can be done monthly this can even be done quarterly or however you choose to set it up so a loop schedule doesn't have to be from a curriculum it can be from anything that you choose or decide um, any type of subject or activity or thing that you want to learn about that your children are interested in, you can just incorporate that. So that's what loop scheduling is in a nutshell. So now let's get into why use a loop schedule. As a homeschooling mom, you may already know that you definitely have so many things in mind and on your list um, and on your calendar of everything that you want to squeeze into that school year. I, for one, have done that in the past, and until I did the loop schedule, I always had all this great stuff, and we really didn't get around to it or finish it like I was hoping. So getting on a loop schedule has helped me to stay on track. We're able to maintain a schedule, and be, uh, we're able to do what um, I had in mind as far as like the curriculum or the activity or uh, whatever it is, the field trips, whatever it is that you're incorporating into your schedule, it's just a great way to um, to stay on track with extra curriculum. So extra curriculum can look like nature days, it can look like handwriting, spelling, um, extra things like vocab, things that you're not going to do every day in homeschool that's not part of your core subjects. So, so for me, my core subjects are math and English and reading. So those are the things that I require done every single day. And then for our loop schedule, we incorporate all the other things such as spelling and handwriting, uh, poetry and read aloud time in our schedule. So how do you use a loop schedule? You have an idea now of what it is, but how do you use it? There are a few different ways you can use a loop schedule. You can do it weekly, you can do it daily, you can do it bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, basically whatever it is that you have and however you can make it stretch in the things that you want to get done is how you can use it. So here's our loop schedule and I keep this in each uh, child's binder and I also have a writ written in pencil because if this doesn't work for us, then we just change it out. Or let's say we finish a subject, then I can simply just erase it and add the new subject in. Monday we do handwriting and um, this does come from curriculum, but you don't have to do curriculum. You can make up your own handwriting. You can write out sentences. You could do Bible text, whatever, that, whatever it is that you want to do as far as handwriting goes, you can get creative and do that. On Tuesdays we do poetry um, okay and then on Wednesday we do history and read aloud on Thursdays we do art and games so their art is from a workbook but again I like I said you can do any type of curriculum or you can make up your own artwork you could visit an art museum you could really do anything and on Fridays we do mass in the library so usually we go to mass in the mornings and then after that we go to the library and they're able to get books and um, recordings and whatever their little hearts desire from the library and that's what we do on Friday so this is our loop schedule and it takes us a whole week to go through it so this is our weekly loop schedule you could add other things to this or you could do weekly so weekly would look like picking a curriculum and marking it in the curriculum for the week of you know the first through the seventh or the first through the eighth and you could say okay monday we're going to look at artwork from this composer and then tuesday we're going to draw and then uh wednesday we're going to listen to an audio about his life and then thursday we're going to read and then Friday we're going to watch a video or whatever um, you want to do however you want to organize it is fine and that would be more of a weekly loop scheduling so whatever topic it is it would just be expanded over a week's time and then the same with a bi-weekly schedule it would be expanded over two weeks 
or a monthly schedule could be expanded over a month, however it is you want to do it, but that is how you do the weekly, bi-weekly, and monthly. Something else to mention is the time. So, okay, we don't do handwriting all day on Monday. So usually handwriting is gonna be the first thing we do in the morning because it works for me. I have a younger uh, pre-Ker that I'm working with, so if I have the older two doing handwriting or reading or something like that as our loop scheduling, then I'm able to have one-on-one -on -one time and work with him, and that's very beneficial for me and my homeschool day, so that's what we choose to do. And handwriting is just a few sheets. You can do time or you can do uh, quantity. So for me, it's quantity. I give them three or four sheets of handwriting, and they have to do that, and that usually takes anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, just depending on how much it is. And then on Tuesday and the other days, the same thing applies. So for me, it's more of the amount of work done than the time it takes us to get the work done because I like to sh try to stay on time as much as I can. We don't have um, like a strict schedule that we follow, but I definitely do more of, of a flow chart schedule throughout our homeschool day. So we might start in the morning with something and then by lunchtime we're doing this other thing and by one or two we're doing this thing and then wrapping up around this time and then whatever. That's the schedule that I follow during the day. I just feel like that works best for us and so we do more of a flow chart schedule. Okay, so those are the basics of a loop schedule. Like I said, there are so many different ways that you can do this. You can approach it any way that you want. You could really get outside of the house and do these loop schedules. You could have a nature day. You could have a exploring day. You could go to a museum. Um, really anything that you are wanting your child to learn, you can incorporate in a loop schedule. One more reason why I love loop scheduling is because you can get all the things that you wanted to get done in the beginning of the year that you just don't have time to tackle daily done throughout the year and they're still learning what you wanted them to learn. So try it out. Let me know how it goes in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions and if you are new to this channel, welcome. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Go ahead and hit that subscribing button. Turn on the bell notifications. That way you can be notified anytime I put a new video out. And until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. God bless.